Why? Hello and welcome everybody. It is Pox again. So today I wanted to go ahead and talk about um, my experiences in Grim Dawn, kind of covering over these new events happening and or occurring in PoE, and as well as a new game that will most likely be showing up on the channel, even if it may just be for a couple days and or weeks, which will be Warframe, but we'll get into that into a little bit. This is way too loud. Okay, so step one, uh, I want to go ahead and just start off with talking about these new events, uh, Turmoil League, and I believe the one coming up later, which is Mayhem. So for Path of Exile, as you guys know, uh, I do play a ton of Path of Exile on my channel. It's actually one of the main games. Um, previously, if you guys didn't know, five and a half years I started streaming on a game called Terra, and that was my original goal was actually play Terra and then move on to Blade and Soul and be an MMO streamer. Well, it turns out Blade and Soul, in my opinion, kind of went to poo-poo, so I stuck with action role-playing games for quite a bit. But I love the experience of an MMO, even if it's instanced uh, somewhat like um, Warframe, but now, now I'm just rambling, so we'll get into that later. So, Turmoil Event. The Turmoil Event in Path of Exile, and I'm sure you guys have already read through this because this is a bit uh, old, is basically majority of the leagues on steroids, so you'll have five Rogue Exiles, five Torment, well, one of these. Five Rogue Exiles, five Tormented Spirits, five Invaders, which would be like Invasion Bosses, five Strong Boxes, Breaches, Parandus Chests, and 33% chance to spawn Kadiro. Uh, Kadiro is really cool because he could basically give you almost anything in the game, including a Headhunter, uh, and he'll require his coins. And a 20% chance to spawn Beyond Demons, Nemesis with five additional rare monster uh, packs, and Bloodlines with six additional magic monster packs. And then, of course, there are a bunch of prizes, although, to be completely honest with you guys, I don't play Path of Exile for the MTX, so I'm just going to skip all of this. If you guys want to read it, it's literally just on the Path of Exile website. Now, with the way my schedule is set up, I think I may be skipping Turmoil event, uh, just because we already did have an event like this, and I'll be completely honest with you guys, I think it's great GG is doing these events because Harbinger League is kind of poo-poo, but I would much rather wait a little bit, continue variety streaming, and then come back during Mayhem, which is basically uh, 20 Rogue Exiles, 20 Tormented Spirits, 20 Invaders, 20 Strong Boxes, 10 Breaches, and a just like Mayhem, or sorry, Turmoil, they rotate once an hour. Um, so I think I am going to delay my time before I go back to Path of Exile and really, you know, play some other stuff. But I may jump into Turmoil, I haven't really decided fully. But that pretty much covers this, and you can see all the stuff here. The next thing is that there was a new thing for Harbinger, which they said... Oh, actually, did I not click it? I saw it here somewhere. Harbinger Content Integration? I think it's this one here, right? Excuse me? Excuse me? Harbinger Challenge League... Uh, did they write the manifesto here? Okay, so they said here, the new currency shard, this is the only thing I really want to like read right here. Um, the new currency shards will not be added to the core game. The currency tab slots for Harbinger items, orbs of annulment, uh, annulment shards, chaos shards, etc. Uh, will be left as they currently are. We may in the future make them vis invisible if you do not have any type of that item type in the tab. None of the unique items from Harbinger will be added to the core game and only be available when the League is available from Zana. The Flow and Tether, the Tempest uh, Binding did have features that were popular with players and you may see key features of these items appear in that way. Uh, okay, so basically they said Harbinger was kind of poo-poo and too easy and we don't want to give you anything except for, I believe it was, the Annul Orb. The Orb of Annulment provides great risk to high-end crafting, but also the potential for great results while adding in uh, a new wrinkle in the path of great items. We knew that this would add great risk associated with adding it, especially when using the standard league with Eternal Orbs. It turned out to be a fine addition to the game. Players had great moments and also terrible results, giving it a similar feel to the Vol Orb in crafting. So this is good. They're keeping the Orb of Annulment, which for people who don't know, is basically like a reverse Exalted Orb, um, as Zizarin would put it, where instead of adding a property to a rare item, it removes a property from a rare item. And this is really cool because you can truly make full use of master crafting by doing this. Like say you get like tier one IPD and you, uh, I don't know, say you uh, uh, automatically like regal something sh like one to two cold damage, 
you could actually annul 50-50, remove the cold damage, and then multi-mod, for example, even though it'd be better to get like an attack speed roll and then regal, but you get the point. But that pretty much sums it up for the PoE content. So now I kind of want to talk about my experiences playing Grimdon. So for that, I'm going to go ahead and just boot up Grimdon here to kind of talk a little bit about it. I don't know if Grimdon has like audio on play. Do I have to like mute this? I don't think so. Grim Dawn, don't do this. I'm going to wait for the program to respond. Okay. So, Grim Dawn uh, is a game that I've been following for, like, I don't know, maybe, like, three years on and off. Obviously, I have not played it for a full three years. I think I have, like, 400 hours, 500 hours on Steam. Uh, and I've really been enjoying my time playing Grim Dawn this go-around. My first original impressions of Grim Dawn a couple years ago was the game looks okay. But the minute they added the devotion system to the game, I really, really personally enjoyed it. And I've been having a lot of fun coming back. Uh, I have played a um, Kabbalist, which, well, sorry, my Kabbalist, which is my summoner, which is a um, necromancer and a cultist. I played him to 100, pretty well geared, having a lot of fun. I also made a druid, which is kind of like uh, an auto attack, pure, like almost all lightning character. A lot of fun on this character, and this dealt with conversion, because I wanted to get into like the nitty gritty of like the min maxing of PoE and Grimdon. Uh, and it's both there in both of the games, which was awesome. And then I was making a death knight. Uh, which is also another like really odd combination class, uh, but I haven't really done much with it. So this may be the last character I finish up before we go into the next game that I want to talk about, which is Warframe. Now, Warframe, I can't really talk too much on because I've only played it once. So the only thing I can really do is tell you guys, Mini K, you want to come here? You want to talk about Warframe, buddy? Come here, Mini K. Psst, psst. All right, so... Warframe is a game that I played, like I said, a very long time ago. I don't remember exactly how long ago it was, but it was it was quite a while ago. Um, and the reason why I didn't really play it is because instance-based games were not really that much of a big hit uh, back in the day. I played um, Vindictus, I played Skyforge, I played, I think it was C9. Uh, I played like a bunch of instance games because I personally really do not mind instance-based games at all. It basically gives you like very little downtime between grinding and or questing and or bossing, uh, and I personally really like that. So I want to try out Warframe now, especially after meeting all the community managers over at TwitchCon. Uh, it's a really friendly community, and they just recently had an open world style patch that I'm pretty curious to check out. Now, I don't know too much on this specifically. I do believe the open world style kind of just adds like sort of how Path of Exile is, how you can go to town and you're like flooded with a bunch of people. So it gives you like the MMO feel without truly being like a full on, you know, raid based MMO. Then again, I don't fully know. I can't really speak too much on Warframe because I have played very little on it, but I'm very curious to check out, um, you know, just how it is. The other cool thing is it's getting a huge, huge attention on Twitch right now because they're doing wonders for their streamers and their audience in general. And that's really a community that I want to jump into. So this gives a perfect time for me to play it in between the downtime of like basically Harbinger and the new league and should still give me enough time, um, even if I play for like two weeks and a half or so, say three weeks, that Mayhem will come and then I can go back to Mayhem and we can start PoE content again. So that's pretty much the schedule that I wanted to run down with you guys. Feel free to let me know your thoughts and everything. Uh, remember, I do variety stream quite a bit on my channel, but I try to like, like real talk, I don't want like to suicide my channel with career suicide. A lot of people are always like, how come you don't try this game or you should try this game or this game, but you have to be careful sometimes as a streamer because you need to find the balance between responsibility and fun, right? You could go play any game in the world, but if people don't watch you, for me, I'm not going to have as much fun as say playing a game like Warframe that's going to be new to me, so automatically it's going to be fun and my audience hopefully will enjoy it, which is fun for me as well. You know, there's like, there's like the big balance you need to find and it's very difficult. So I do apologize if it doesn't come off the right way, you know, it has nothing to do with the money. It's about continuing to grow your channel and your, you know, your viewers with you. So anyway, I hope you guys had a wonderful time. Uh, if you did, please feel free to like, share and subscribe. And remember, you can catch myself streaming live every day at twitch.tv slash pox. Hope you guys have a wonderful time and Mini K will see you guys all later. Have a good one, everybody. Mini K, you want to say goodbye? Say goodbye, Mini K. Mini K, say goodbye, everyone. Goodbye.